but it's a good day because this is the day the Lord's made. And I'm going to rejoice in this day because no matter what comes my way, no matter what comes your way, Jesus wants to be your friend. I thought about this message several weeks ago whenever I got a notice on Messenger on Facebook from, <laughs> from a friend that Dave and I had in Bible college. And uh, this friend's name is, well, we knew him as Bobby. It, he calls himself Robert now. Of course, he's grown up, so he's Robert. But Bobby Biberstein met, sent me a message and said, since you and David have not responded to my messages, I'm going to unfriend you. Well, I've never had that happen before. And that just hurt my feelings. <laughs> But I explained to him, I sent back a message and said, well, we had an old phone, we had old equipment, and I did not get your message that you wanted to talk to us or connect with us. And I said, I'm very, very sorry. We would love to hear how your life is going. And uh, so, therefore, we've been talking about once a week since then. And uh, I'm just glad that when God doesn't hear from us once in a while, that he doesn't unfriend us. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. You know, um, something that I learned this week, and I had actually seen this before, but uh, the man who wrote this uh, song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, uh, Joseph Scriven is his name. And he had a rough life. He went to buy, he grew up in a wonderful Christian environment, um, grew up in Ireland. And after his first fiance died or she drowned the night before they were to get married, um, he started writing these songs, writing down the words. What a friend we have in Jesus. He decided he needed to change locations of where he was. So he moved to Canada, started attending the Plymouth Brethren Church, eventually got engaged again, and several months before he was to be married, his second fiancé died of a very bad illness. He went into a severe depression. And years later, he just... All he would do, he would cut wood for people that were widows and people that were going through hardships. He gave his service to the Lord, but his heart was empty and his heart was bare. They couldn't find him one day, and upon a further search, they found his body had come up from a lake. They didn't know if it was suicide or if he had accidentally drowned. What's sad is that he ended up in a very depressed state, not realizing what a friend he had in Jesus. You know, and if you think you need somebody with skin on, like the little girl that said, I'm so scared, Mommy, you know, and Mommy said, Oh, honey, Jesus is right here in the room. And the little girl says, But Mommy, I need someone with skin on. Sometimes you don't have that somebody with skin on. Sometimes you need to go to the Lord in prayer and learn how to be a friend of Jesus. Amen? Amen. I hope each of you have found that at some time in your life. Aren't you glad that we have that friend, all of our sins and griefs to bear? I... Uh, started studying this, like I said, several weeks ago. All of us have various reasons, various times that we choose our friends, various times that friends are chosen for us. I have a friend that is in Peoria. She, we grew up together. She has been, she's, I call her my lifetime friend. She's been there 
for everything, uh, through my weddings, uh, through the death of my first husband. She's been, she was there. I don't know what I'd have done without her. Through all of my surgeries, through everything that I've had in the last 10 years, Kathy has been a wonderful friend. She would doctor my wounds. She would pack my wounds and you know, she was there day and night uh, whenever something needed to be done. They had to leave my wounds open so that they could heal. And she would come sometimes in the middle of the night and clean up the mess and repack my wounds. <laughs> Isn't that what Jesus does? Isn't that what Jesus does? He comes in the middle of the night and gives us a song. He comes in those dark times that we think that we can't go on. He came into my room in the hospital whenever they said that I wasn't going to make it and that they called the family together. He was there. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with the load of care? Barb, you know what it's like. To bury a husband, to bury two husbands. Some of you others know here, Janny, others know here what it's like whenever you're going through those hard, struggled times in your life. Many of you have gone through divorces. Many of you have lost siblings. Many of you have lost your own life trying to find it and had to come back and try to find your life again and find out where you fit. Well, let me tell you where you fit. You fit in the arms of God because his arms are supersized and it's one size fits all. Amen. 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 My scripture text for this morning I found in John chapter 15. <laughs> Greater love hath no man than this, than he lay down his life for who? Say it again. Greater love hath no man than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. Amen. Can you say that louder? His friends. Thank you. I know you're awake now. You know, it's an honor for each and every one of us to have the Messiah, God incarnate. We talk about that a lot at Christmas time. God in flesh, come to be with us. Our maker, our creator, come to earth, make a blood covenant with us and call us friend. Friend to you may mean somebody else. I look at you and I go, you're my friends. But let me tell you what, there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And right now, if we weren't going through all this virus thing and I wasn't looking out here at a bunch of mass faces, not able to tell if you're smiling or if you're going, oh, good grief, I hope she hurries up and gets this done. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at you and I know that you're my friend. I love you because I'm... I, that's why I know you're my friend, because I love you. But, but if there was not this barrier between us now, you ought to be really glad if you're sitting in the front row that there is this barrier, because my teeth may come out at any moment. Uh, so, because I really need a drink of water, and there's none here in this room. But, uh, but I'm so glad that God called us friend. And I'm so glad that, that we can be honored by his presence this morning, knowing that he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Uh, he said that no greater love hath any man that he laid down his life. And Jesus did just that, didn't he? He laid down his life for us so that he could call us a friend. Amen. Uh, I'm reminded of the story here of a soldier who asked his officer in World War One. <laughs> He came back to where all of the soldiers had gathered to make sure that everyone was okay. And he told his officer, his commanding officer, that he had a friend that was out in the battlefield and he was mortally wounded and he wanted to go get him. And the, the commanding officer said, Jim, don't go out there. 
Don't go out there because I don't want to lose two of you. He said, I have to. And so the soldier went out into the field and he found his friend and he gathered him up in his arms. He gathered him up in his arms, put him over his shoulder, carried him back to where everyone else was and laid him gently on the ground. Thank you so much. You may have laughed, but it happened one time. I've lost enough weight to where they're loose, and I have to get new ones made. Too much information, wasn't it? <laughs> we're friends, we're good. Thank you. Laid his buddy down on the ground. The officer said, that's sad. I said, but Jim, you're mortally wounded too. And you're not going to make it. Why did you go out and get your buddy? Why did you go out there? Jim said, sir, it was worth it. It was well worth it. Because when I got there, he wasn't dead yet. And he looked up at me and he said, Jim, I knew you'd come. Jim, I knew you'd come. Amen. I want you to look at those around you this morning. Would you go out into the battlefield for them? If you knew they were wounded, would you go out into the battlefield for them this morning? That's something that only you can answer. And I normally love to be giving an upbeat, joyful, glee message. But boy, God laid this on my heart strong and heavy. In times like these, we need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. We need an anchor and we better be very sure very sure, my friends, that our anchor holds and it grips that solid rock. And that solid rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. He's that one, Katie. And the solid rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure this morning, be very sure that your anchor holds and it grips that solid rock. Laying down our life for someone, as we look at it in the human aspect, man, I think of pain. Kathy and I were talking about that last night. We were talking about how people uh, go through sometimes major suffering and stuff because uh, they're, they're going through uh, persecution. We think of people in other countries that the parents have to watch their children being dismembered because they're Christians. They're being persecuted for righteousness sake. And we know of stories that have come from missionaries and come to our ears and our eyes to read of people having to watch members of their family die because they were of the faith. They're Christians. And my friends, we are headed there. And we can shake our head all we want and say, not in America. Let me tell you what, there are things happening right now in America that I never thought I would see. And I'm so glad my daddy's on, gone on to glory because otherwise we'd probably be visiting him in jail, you know, uh, because he would be so angry. He would be so upset of the things that are going on. We better be very sure that our anchor holds. We better be sure that what a friend we have in Jesus and make sure that not only he is our friend, but that, that we are his friend. And we know that we're his friend if we do what it, whatever he commands us to do. That's how we know, and that's how the world knows that we are his friend. He friended us first. We have a choice of pushing the unfriend button. But no matter what we do, he still knows what we're choosing. He knows what's in our heart. He knows what our fingers are going to type in, whether we're going to friend or unfriend him this morning. Another old hymn uh, speaks of 
Jesus being our friend, I found a friend, oh, such a friend. He loved me ere I knew him. He drew me with the cords of love, and thus he bound me to him. And this is where I was going earlier. I could have, before this virus, maybe brought uh, Jennifer up here and had uh, somebody come up, maybe Cody come up and tie a rope around us. And everywhere I would walk this morning up here, Jennifer would have to come along because we were bound together. Are you bound this morning? with the friendship of Jesus. He drew me with the cords of love and thus he bound me to him. And though my, and still through my heart, it's closely bound. No power on earth. Can you say that with me this morning? No power on earth can sever. For I am his and he is mine forever and forever. I pray this morning you can say that with all your heart, that there's nothing in this world. We, we know in the scriptures it says, For I am persuaded to believe that nothing can separate me from the love of God, neither height nor depth, nor principalities, anything in this world, things present or things to come can ever separate me from the precious love of God. There is nothing that can separate you except you. You have the right to pull that string. And I want to talk to the young people this morning. How many do we have here under 25? You better get your relationship right. In spirit, in spirit, you're 25. How many under 30? Not just for the young people, but just for the rest of us, too. We better choose our friends wisely. I used to hear my dad say, you're known by the company you keep. My dad would say, a wise man is known by the friends he has, and a foolish man the same. You find those in Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. I don't know about you, but I've had to unfriend some people. How many of you ever unfriended someone because they were not healthy for you? For those of you who have gone through addictions, I still haven't unfriended all of my overeaters. I'm so sorry. When we get together, Kathy, I may have to unfriend you. We found a favorite ice cream joint in Terre Haute. And we may have to unfriend. <laughs> but for those of us that have addictions, for those of you that have had drug addictions, alcohol addictions, other things, gambling, you have to unfriend those and quit hanging around those that you used to hang around with. And I'm going to say here, thus saith the Lord. Because you are known not only by the company you keep, but also that company, if you continue to keep that company. And kids, you face that same thing in school. If you have peers that are doing things that are wrong, they are going to influence you. No matter what your parents do at home, they are influenced by their peers. We've heard Roman come up with some very dandy words. And we asked where he got them. And he told us the little kid's name <laughs> at school where he found those words. You pick up what you're around. Amen? When I go to Kentucky, I come back sounding like this. And I, I don't know, but it, it, it just takes a couple days for me to get back into that routine of saying, I, I know that I, I want some turnip grains and some cornbread and some white beans. That just sounds so good. It takes me a while to get back to my northern accent. You pick up what you're around. And right now with this coronavirus we all are very familiar with what that does, aren't we? We can pick up what we're around. And so I would speak words of wisdom to each and every one of us. If there's someone that we have to unfriend, you need to do it today. Because you don't want poison in your life. And Jesus doesn't want poison in your life. Amen?
Amen. God designed us for friendships. You know, God, God had it in his mind. He's, he was lonely. And he designed, he created mankind for fellowship and for friendship. Abraham was a friend of God. It says, as we read in John, uh, it says that uh, Abraham, actually it's not in John, it's in Peter. And if I can keep my Bible from falling apart here, in Peter, it says that uh, it was counted to Abraham for righteousness for how he was. It's actually in James, where I had my thing, my marker. It says, Abraham, James 4, 23 says, The scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Wouldn't you like to have that on your, well, I'd say on your tombstone. Some of you may not even be thinking that far ahead. Wouldn't you like for someone to say about you, oh, she, he is a friend of God. Woo! I mean, that would be so awesome to hear she's a friend of God. He's a friend of God. What Abraham did, how he lived his life, how Abraham's faith was drawn to God coming out of the land of Ur. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't even a believer. He was, came out of a land that had many gods. And Abraham came out and he served the one true God. And now we say the God of who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham had such a faith, and he lived such a life of obedience. He, did he make mistakes? Yeah, you bet. You know, whenever he, he told uh, some people of very much importance that Sarah was his sister, because he didn't want to get hurt. You know, he made mistakes. We make mistakes. How many of you have never made a mistake? <laughs> that was a big mistake right there. Because now I can preach to you. <laughs> For you who think you have no sin, <laughs> we all make mistakes. We all come short of the glory of God, don't we? We all make decisions that were not wise. But Abraham was a friend of God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the God that we will serve. That's what Joshua said, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. He was a friend of God. As part of a, an assignment for a doctrinal thesis, a thesis, a college student spent a year with a group of Navajo Indians. He spent it on a reservation in the Southwest and as he did his research, he lived with one Navajo family. He ate with them. He slept with them. He uh, did work alongside them so he would know how their lives were. How, how did they manage their lives? How did they do all the things and accomplish all the things that they could accomplish? And he did this all in the 20th century so that he could understand their life. There was an old grandmother that spoke no English, and he spoke no Navajo. But somehow, in that little family, that love grew between him and that grandma. And they would spend their days, she would be learning a little bit of English, and he would be learning a little bit of the Navajo language. And the whole community fell in love with this young student studying for his doctoral degree. On the day that came that he had to leave the community, there were a lot of tears shed. And the whole community came out and had a feast and prepared a celebration of his life there with them. And as the young man went to get in his truck that was taking him away from the reservation, the old grandma gingerly walked up to him 
and she put his face in her old, frail, wrinkled, hard-working hands, and she whispered in his ear, and she said, I like who I am when I'm with you. <laughs> Is there somebody in your life right now that you could say that about? Is there someone right now that you could go to and put their face in your hands and said, I like me best when I'm with you? Every one of us need friends, my friend. I pray that you have friends surround you and friends that gather around you. Right now, we have some people in the church missing because they have to be at home. They need a friend like us. I think of many that can't be here with us. They need us. They need a phone call. Yes, and I'm going to call you this week. I'm going to call you, I promise. We learn how valuable we are, and we learn how valuable others are when we have friends. And let me bring something else up here. A righteous person is cautious in friendships, but the wicked leads them astray. You know, and when we enter a dark room, sometimes we will stumble and we may stump our toe or bump our knee. Believe me, I have them all over my legs. But we need to consider our friendships at that kind of a pace. We need to ponder and consider the friendships that we have. We need to ponder and we need to consider the friendship that we have with Jesus. Do you even, do we even have a friendship with Jesus? I don't know, but we, Kathy and I talk just about every day. My friend Pam in Peoria and I talk just about every day. They were the first two people I called when the kids told us they were divorcing. The very first two that I called. The next ones I told were my friends here at the church with, with music practice, and they prayed with me. I, I wept for three days. Do you have somebody that you can call and have them pray with you? I pray you do. David, I pray that you have somebody that you can call whenever you are feeling those temptations and Satan beating at your door. I pray that you have somebody that you can call and say, I need your help. I need you to reach heaven for me right now. Jennifer, I hope you can have someone that you can pray with and someone that's going to reach down to you and say, I understand your heartache. I understand your grief, and I'm here for you, and I'm here with you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Laura, you've got a handful. I hope you and Jerry know that we're here for you. And as you battle things at home and as you go through all the strife and all the things, the things with your work, all of the things, I pray that you know that you've got a church family that loves you and we're here to be your friends. And we will pray with you and we will weep with you and we'll rejoice with you whenever the answer comes. Are you a friend of God this morning? Yeah. You may even ask me, how does this relate to my Christian life? And I answer you, how does it not relate to your Christian life? It's all about our life. God created us for fellowship. God created us for friendship. Everything about our life is all about the friendships that we have. Who can we count on? Who can we not count on? And I want to encourage you this morning.
that as you think about your friendships today, I'll give you a week to think about it. To think about the friendships that you have. And are you a better person for the friends that you have? Do your friends tell you the truth? Are they honest with you? Will they tell you, you know what? Sheila, you got broccoli in your teeth. <clears throat> and that's just a little thing. <laughs> but please tell me if I have broccoli in my teeth. Please tell me if I have toilet paper running out of the back of my britches. Or on the bottom of my shoe. Please tell me. Don't let me walk around dragging a piece of toilet paper on my shoe. Please. Don't count on Jerry to tell you. I won't. I don't see He doesn't tell the truth. The truth is not in him. <laughs> is that my experience? <laughs> we can tell the truth and love to a friend. Because a friend loves at all times. Amen? Amen. God loves us at all times. That doesn't mean that he doesn't get disappointed in us. But he knew beforehand what we were going to do and how we were going to respond. But let me tell you what. He will always place people in your life at the right time to be able to tell you, I think you are erroring in this way. You may need to think about considering maybe a little more forgiveness. You may need to consider maybe having a little more grace. Because grace, grace, God's grace was extended to us. And when you get frustrated that somebody's not growing in their Christian walk, like you think they should grow in their Christian walk, just remember somebody had grace to show you when you were beginning your Christian walk. Amen. Amen. You know, we've all been there. We've all hurt. We've all been hurt. And we've all hurt someone at some time in our life. There must be a fire somewhere. Deception. You know, sometimes people will come into our lives and we will find ourselves deceived by maybe their outgoingness, maybe by their knowledge. I have a friend that is a <laughs> retired pastor, if you want to call him that, and uh, I'm having to unfriend him. He has become an apostate, and he has become one that's walked away from the very tenets of our faith, still calling himself a Christian but involved in so many other things and saying things that are very offensive to the things that I believe. I'm not offended by political things. It's just, you know, if you want to believe that way, that's fine. But, you know, as for me and my house, we're all through the Lord. <laughs> as for me and my house, we're going to stand up for the right to life. We're going to stand up for the flag. We're going to stand up... <laughs> for what God has foreordained by those that went before us and they battled for our freedom. I'm going to stand for that. I'm going to stand for that. And never, never will I ever agree with abortion under no way circumstance. My niece and her husband just adopted. Last year they adopted a little maverick. Flew to Utah, paid $40,000 for Maverick, and my niece and her husband are about as white as my hair. They're white. And they adopted Maverick, who's as black as Kathy's shirt. I mean, you can't even see his eyes. He is a doll baby. He's 18 months old. They flew out to Utah two weeks ago and waited for the birth of Maverick's little baby brother. And the baby had to be in intensive care for two weeks. And now they have two little blackens. And uh, Maddox, their natural son, says, isn't my beautiful black baby brother beautiful? 
I'm all for life, folks. God's for life and God's for friends. I'm glad this morning that I can look at you and call you my friend. Proverbs 13:20 says it well. One who walks with wise with wisdom or with wise men grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. Are you walking with the wise this morning? I ask you to pray about this this week. And if there are people in your life that you need to just step away from, because you need the Lord more than you've ever needed him before in these days. What a friend we have in Jesus. Would you stand with me? With every head bowed and your eyes closed. How many of you would say this morning that I need to be wiser in choosing my friends? Would you raise your hand? Amen. God sees that. How many of you would say this morning, I will pray for my friends here in the church to choose wise friends? Would you commit to pray for people to choose wiser friends? Amen. Thank you. Father, thank you that you choose to call us friends. You said that if we follow your commandments, that we are called your friends. I thank you for the friendships and the ties that we have. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred kind like that above. Jesus, you said that you are in the Father and the Father is in you, and if we know you, we know the Father. Father, may our hearts continually seek to know your will and seek for the wisdom that you have to give to your children. You said you would not withhold anything from us if we would ask it in faith believing. So, Father, right now, in faith believing, we believe that you want the very best for us. I pray for each one within my listening ear this morning that you would give us the wisdom that we need to choose those to surround us, to choose those to be around us, Lord, that whenever we look at them, we can say, I'm a better person because you are in my life. And Lord, to lay aside those things that easily beset us, and sometimes those things are people, Lord, Sometimes we need to lay down so-called friendships. We don't need the friends of Job to tell us to curse God and die. We need friends that would say, let's go to God's word and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Does Jesus care? Yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with our grief. His heart is touched with our sorrow. His heart is touched with the things that go on around us that we don't know how we're going to face tomorrow. But Lord, we know that you hold us in the palm of your hands and you are not going to let go, that you have bound us to you, that where you go, Lord, we're going to follow. Father, give us that desire. Place within us that desire to know you more, to seek you more, to learn more about you, Lord. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who taught his disciples to pray in this manner. Our Father, who art in heaven, would you pray with me? Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And all God's children say, amen and amen. I pray you leave this place today feeling blessed. I pray you leave this place knowing that Jesus wants to be your friend. If he's not your friend already, someone will help to introduce you to him as a friend. Jesus, what a friend of sinners. Jesus, lover of my soul. You will be dismissed by Rose. Thank you for coming. May God bless.